mental health is a, a epidemic in itself. And so we should treat that with the same sense of urgency as we do the pandemic. Since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, the number of adults coping with mental health disorders has increased significantly. The nature of COVID, which is, you know, shelter in place, social distancing, and not being able to, to really spend time with family, support systems. So that has um, really exacerbated um, what was already there. Just even lack of sunlight, you know, being confined at home um, where there might be stressors. Depression and mania can lead to worsened social isolation, especially when compounded by stress, let alone a global pandemic. If you look at Atlas, you know, the, the, he's the god, of course, of, and he used to hold the whole world up. And, um, you know, people with bipolar already have that world on top of them. To add COVID-19 is like adding a whole other world on top. And it's actually two worlds, two Earths, right? I would have meltdowns. I would be happy one minute, crying the next. Um, and it came on very, very suddenly. Jennifer Fries has been coping with her bipolar since she was six years old. She's now in her 40s. She got COVID-19 the day before it was declared a global pandemic. I didn't tell anybody that I had COVID-19. It's very similar to like when you tell someone you're bipolar and they're like, oh my gosh, you're bipolar, oh, you know, you're, you know, they, they get scared when, they, like, what do you have to be afraid of with me? Suicidal ideation has worsened during the pandemic, and those with chronic illnesses are more vulnerable to higher levels of stress, anxiety, and depression. We shouldn't have to wait until people are dying before we um, are really highlighting and talking about something that's so important. Things like university and office closures and economic downturns have contributed to people's anxiety, depression, and worry. Feeling bad about yourself has gone you know, through the roof. Uh, just as an example, um, you know, we have a uh, 24 by 7 hotline right now. Um, and since the pandemic, those calls has risen by 80%. And it's not just this hotline. There's been a rise in people seeking treatment for mental health since the start of the pandemic nationally. One study found that reports of anxiety and depression surged from 11% in 2019 to 41% in 2021. It may not just be from stress. There's also evidence that COVID infection itself is associated with neurologic damage that might contribute to mental health disorders. Now, some people who have been coping with mental health conditions for many years may actually be able to bounce back more easily than those who've never faced such a challenge. The people with a mental health condition are probably the most resilient people you'll ever want to meet. They've come through, you know, the, the most troubling of times. After developing COVID, Jennifer Freeze self-quarantined for a month. Coping techniques she learned over the years to treat her bipolar disorder helped her manage the isolation. I made it a point to reach out to three people every single day. For those struggling with bipolar, there are additional coping mechanisms. Basic things like remaining on a schedule and not self-isolating can be helpful, especially during the pandemic. If you eat well, uh, see your doctor or stick with your therapy, mindfulness meditation, exercise, routine, and the support system. and that. All of those things together are, are integrated and, and it's important that we consider all of those things and not just, not just even therapy and certainly not just medications. I think that the, the people who I know who are, who are really struggling most are the people that this is new to or the people that are that are new to recognizing that their routine needs to be different or recognizing that staying in sweatpants all day and on and off napping all day is going to affect your mood. But those seeking treatment may not have equal access. The pandemic has shed light on inequities people face when receiving care and support. Some of us have more resources than others of us. 
And whether it's because we're white or because we have financial support or emotional support, all of these things are making it really making it really clear that there's a that there's a big difference in those in those people who have resources and those who don't. And that's very, very true in mental health always. And it's especially true now. Access to medication and even affordability of medication has become an issue, not being able to get out of the house. Um, um, and then with loss of employment, which is very common, I'm seeing a lot with my clients, is that it's a loss of you know, health insurance. You know, so that causes so many different problems. The COVID-19 pandemic has laid bare that we are in the middle of a mental health crisis. Why would we not want to, to take care of our mental health? That should be a priority.